I spent 100 days as Cynthia in Minecraft Pokemon, and along the way, I will complete some goals that fit the Sinnoh Champion. We need to build her Champion team from Pokemon Platinum, and also a few others that got the spotlight in the Pokemon anime. Obtain the Mega Ring and Mega Stone for Garchomp to Mega Evolve. Get the whole team up to level 100, and finally, take down Cyrus, the leader of Team Galactic in the Sinnoh region. Will I complete all my goals and save the region? Well, watch till the end to find out. Some of you may not know this about Cynthia's backstory, but she started off her journey with an egg that hatched into a gibble, and so with our brand new partner, our journey begins. He might not like me very much right now, but we'll soon be feared by every trainer across the land. I may have clocked my new partner a few too many times in the head, <laughs> whoops. So we headed on over to the Pokemon Center, got him healed up, and started exploring the region. First off, I wanted to find a Pokemon to add to the team. Ideally, it would be Feebas as it was the first ever Pokemon Cynthia caught back when she was a kid. And I didn't have my hopes up though as it was an ultra rare spawn. While trying to find a swamp, I found one of them Swana wedding boats and while I was up there, I noticed one of the Pokemon that I needed was swimming around the boat. Cynthia has a Gastrodon on her Diamond and Pearl team and was a vital part in the Masters 8 tournament. If you don't know, Gastrodon has two variants, blue and pink. Well, unfortunately the one I found didn't match the one she owned, so that was basically a bust. In a nearby desert, I headed on into one of them funky ruins and I got the best item in the game right off the bat. An XP all this early in the game is huge considering we have to get a whole team of 6 up to level 100. I saw a Raiden far out into the ocean, so I decided to make my way there and you wouldn't believe what I found. I had no expectation of finding Feebas this early, but defeating it was only half the job. The other half was down to pure luck. I only had one shot at throwing this Pokeball and hoping to catch it. Feebas was now mine and hopefully one day we will be able to evolve it into a majestic Milotic. But for now, we have to move on to the next Pokemon Cynthia found. Well, to be honest, there is no historical data of what order Cynthia caught her Pokemon besides her Gibble and Feebas, so we can kinda just hunt for the rest in any order at this point. I came across a ruined portal, so I collected the nuggets, crafted an iron pickaxe, and headed back to a village that I found, so that I could mine the vending machine in the mart. It's basically a portable potion supplier, so I ain't gonna pass up on that. Cynthia is a queen, at least proposed by many of her loyal fans. And just like any other queen, she deserves a crown, showing her worth. I got distracted by a raid den of what looked like Greninja, but thankfully I noticed it cause right next to it was a flowery field which had a few Rosalia and Rose Raids spawned in. As we all know, Rose Raid is one of her signature Pokemon. I accidentally killed one of them and the others were too high of a level to catch. But there was one that was perfectly suited for me. And just like that, I was able to get my redemption story. With Rosalia on the team, we now had three of her eight main Pokemon. <laughs> what am I doing with my life? I was able to locate Team Galactic's base of operations and had my eye on their leader. I wasn't anywhere near ready to take him on, so I made a dash for it. And this is when I felt like I needed to build myself a relaxing home. And what better than the traumatic beach house in Undala Town, where she suddenly appears and demolishes your team like never before. I mean, I've certainly had scars from that battle, and if you haven't, then you're lying! The desert was a great place to build, this way I could also have the best chance for a Mega Garchomp to spawn which would boost my partner's offenses to its limits. Everything was slowly coming together. All the signs were pointing to the fact that this was a brilliant idea, cause just when I least expected it, a pink shallow spawned. Now Gastrodon might not be the powerhouse that you expected Cynthia to use, but with its weird squishy body and 
great defensive typing, it makes it a force to be reckoned with. While I was thinking what Pokemon I wanted to hunt next, I decided to grow a berry tree, and this was a really important step, and you will get to know why in just a little bit. <laughs> Master Ball loot and I'm getting room service? Really? <laughs> Let's save that for the hotel, like why are they bringing such weird items into Pokemon? My baby Gibble was quickly evolving into Gabite, one step closer to the monstrous duo that we all know and love. And right after that, I found a horde of fortified Gibbles, which is kinda making me feel like mine isn't as special as I thought. With my team fanning up the wazoo, it was about time that I invested in a healing machine. So I went underground, looking all over for diamonds since they were the key component. There we go, it's matching the vending machine too. And at this point, it was actually my Rosalia that was being the boss of the group, manhandling every Pokemon and trainer that came in its path. I raided a carp-like submarine which had some crap inside, especially the Team Aqua armor that I had found. It was definitely not a vibe on my girl, <laughs> that's for sure. Um, a, a Tapu Bulu spawned out of nowhere? But uh, there's no use of legendaries in this challenge because she doesn't make use of any. So I killed it and took its remains as a souvenir. I hung it up back at my home as a warning for any other legend that felt like spawning. I saw a little grey bean on the map and was like, hmm, it's probably just a boss, right? But what I had found was a shiny toad school. The mushroom boys are super funky and I love it. I easily caught it and then made sure to evolve it. Toad school has one of the best shiny color schemes ever. I don't normally like pink, but it goes really well with the black. Hey, for all you know, Cynthia is an avid shiny collector. I mean, can you even tell if her Garchomp is shiny or not? Well, I'll let you think about that one. Killing one of those bosses gave me a few rewards, and I got my first ever Z Crystal. But without a band, I wouldn't be able to use it, and either ways, I don't think Cynthia ever used a Z move. With that battle, my Shellos was now evolving and for being a literal slug, it was rapid. <laughs> so with Gastrodon, we had now achieved our first final evolution. I was looking up what time Riolu spawns, and just like a minute later, <laughs> guess who decided to show up? Lucario is actually one of the few Pokemon that takes part in most of her teams across generations. The only reason Cynthia didn't use one in the Masters 8 tournament is because it was Ash's most iconic Pokemon and the anime people didn't want its spotlight to be stolen. I was having a bit of trouble trying to evolve Feebas. It requires a prism scale to evolve, and the only way I could get one was from Pokeloot on the ground. But then I found a Milotic raid which would have solved all my problems if I managed to defeat it and catch it. But thanks to my useless teammates, that outcome never came to be as the den exploded, crushing my hopes and dreams. At this point, I went back home and fed the berries that I had grown to my Riolu. These berries helped to increase the happiness stat of a Pokemon, and I had enough to meet the conditions for it to evolve. Lucario was sure to be on my final team, always making for a trustworthy ally. I got an ability capsule for defeating a raid den so the best Pokemon I could use it on for the moment was Gastrodon, changing it from Sticky Hold to Storm Drain, sucking in all the water moves to increase my special attack. Gabite was on the verge of evolving, and when I got myself a rare candy, there was no other option. Me and my partner have come so far together, from just a little egg, all the way up to a menacing Garchomp. We still had a lot to learn, but we are slowly becoming powerful, no doubt about that. Garchomp is actually a Pokemon that can fly, so I took to the skies. Traveling the region just became a hell of a lot easier. I wanted to power up my Pokemon with some better moves, so I headed to the Tower of Waters. I could skip all the battles by flying to the top, where you can find a move relearner, and my Lucario and Gastrodon definitely got the most out of it, being able to learn moves like Muddy Water and Meteor Mesh. Second time's the charm, hopefully? Uh, this time, I was able to defeat the Milotic Raid, but now it all came down to this one Ultra Ball. <sighs> okay, today must be my lucky day, got a few rare candies and a choice band. Through my journey, I came across Team Plasma's airship. 
Quite frankly, I didn't really care about them since they're not terrorizing my region. But I took it upon myself to beat all the trainers inside. And the leader of Team Plasma asked me to join and so I did. I mean, I totally didn't do it just to get their outfit, but you know, <laughs> it's kinda sick. I've had Rosalia for quite some time now and the way you evolve it is by exposing it to a shiny stone. Now the only area where shiny stone ore naturally spawns is right under ray dents that are located in the Badlands biome. I finally found my destination and was ready to start collecting a lot of these shards cause not only does Roselia evolve like this but also Togetic into Togekiss. So I needed at least 18 shards but what I didn't realize is that only one ore is present under every raid den. So I saved this location on my map and started devising a plan. It was very unlikely that there would be 18 raid dens in that area, so I started to make some headway on building an enchanting area to hopefully get fortune. I stole the table from a church and then started making my own sugarcane farm for the paper. I killed a bunch of whalemers for the leather until I finally had enough bookshelves to get the enchant that I wanted. I even went into the nether to get some extra levels, and so I enchanted away book after book, I wasn't getting what I wanted, but then I got Silk Touch. It isn't fortune, but at least this way, I could go back to the Badlands and start mining every shiny stone ore that I had found. I could collect them and save them for later, and this way I got 12 blocks and placed them down around my base. After grinding for more experience, I eventually got the Fortune 3 Enchant. We ended up getting plenty of shards, so I crafted the shiny stones, and it was now time to evolve my elegant Roselia into a heroic looking Rose Raid. With that out of the way, I could now focus on finding the remaining Pokemon. I found this neat little area with a birch forest and dark forest side by side. This was a great place since Eevee spawns during the day in the birch forest, while Spiritomb spawns at night in the dark forest. I'm sure that most of you are familiar with Cynthia's Spiritomb. It was her lead Pokemon on her champion team. When the battle started and you saw her throwing out Spiritomb, you knew that you were in for a tough fight, especially with its creepy vibe matching her champion theme. But some of you may be wondering why I'm looking for an Eevee. Well, remember how I mentioned the Undela Town home where she beats the absolute crap out of you? Well, in Black 2 and White 2, she makes use of a Glaceon on her team, and it also makes an anime appearance in the episode All for the Love of Meloetta. Days passed by while I was camping in these two areas. In the meantime, I was able to get a Golden Bottle Cap and Ability Patch which are game changers for the final battle versus Cyrus. I changed Garchomp's ability from Sand Whale to Rough Skin which does damage to the opponent when they use contact moves. Back at home, I saw a Mega Camera up in the distance. This was my chance to get myself a Mega Ring, so I threw my Rose Raid into battle, using Stun Spore to paralyze it, and then followed up with Gastrodon to soften it up with a few water type moves that brought an end to it. Upon defeating the Mega Boss, I received the Camera up type and the Mega Ring. I was only half done with this goal as I still need to find myself a Mega Garchomp. Within a few days, Eevee had spawned and it took me all day to catch the stubborn little guy, but you know what? It was worth it. All I had to do now was find myself an ice rock which you can find in the snowy biome. I broke one on accident before evolving my Eevee, but luckily there was another one close to a village. So I used my rare candy and our Eevee turned into a graceful Glaceon. Sadly, it's a very underrated evolution thanks to its horrible typing but if anybody can bring out the best of it, that's definitely gonna be me. The two remaining Pokemon that I needed were Spiritomb and Togekiss, both of which are ultra rare spawns. So I decided to start collecting berries, so as to craft a few lures to increase their spawn chances. Did you know that Cynthia had an Electros on her black and white team? Well, now you know, and that's why I'm trying to beat and capture this electric that I found in the raid den. A day later, I found myself a Zapdos Shrine. I can't summon it and there's really no point in trying, but the spikes that cover the area have Thunderstone ore within them, so I was able to get enough to craft a Thunderstone which is the evolution method for Electric to evolve into Electros. 
Now that I had caught the succubus leech eel thing, uh, <laughs> there's nothing more to it. Along with Electros was another addition to her team. Fortunately, I lost the raid, so I couldn't attempt to catch it. But at least to learn something today, <laughs> however useless it is. It was at this point that I realized that I needed to step on the gas in terms of my Pokemon's levels, so I dedicated myself to going to the nether and building a little area around the lava for me to walk around. A lot of high level Magmars and Turinators spawn here, close to level 90 even, so with my Garchomp they made the perfect prey for me to grind up. After a long session, I went back home and started finding the wild Pokemon that dropped the berries that I needed upon death. Metatite gave us the Enigma berry, Absol with the Roselli berry, and Executor with the Lumberry. We now had everything we needed. When I least expected it, a Mega Garchomp showed itself, and this was the final hurdle for my very own Garchomp to conquer, to show that it was truly the best. And. Yeah, that didn't turn out well at all. I kept losing to the dang thing and I only had one remaining option. I brought all the revives that I had and went into battle. Since it one-shots every single one of my Pokemon, the only way I could beat it was to sacrifice my Garchomp and let it take rough skin damage in the process. I did the same thing with my Gastrodon which was holding the Rocky Helmet which gives off the same effect. So by constantly reviving each of them, the boss eventually killed itself by residual damage. I know, it was a super cheesy way to defeat the boss, but all that matters now is that I got the job done. With my newly obtained Garchomp bite, nobody was gonna stop us now. I planted the berries and watched them grow for a full day, crafted my lures and headed into the dark forest. As usual, I stayed there every night only this time, I went to the taigas in the morning to look for Togekiss. As soon as I'd gotten there, my eyes were glued to the map so that I could spot one if it were ever to spawn. But in doing so, I missed a few of them that flew right past my screen. <laughs> and thankfully, I caught a glimpse of the Togekiss icon just as it was leaving my map's radius. So I began my chase after it and was able to engage it in battle. Togekiss is one of Cynthia's best Pokemon, relying on it to Gigantamax and defeat Ash in the Masters 8 tournament. Some of you may also remember that in Pokemon Platinum, she gives you an egg as you leave Eterna City, which hatches into a Togepi. Now the only remaining member of her main team is Spiritomb, so I basically sat on my ass for a couple of days until it spawned. In the meantime, I did find a shiny Hoot Hoot, so I caught the Golden Burb and continued my search. During the day, I went back to the move relearner to teach my new Togekiss some great moves like Air Slash and Aura Sphere, and was able to change its ability to Serene Grace. The next night, I beat a Mega Medicham and found a Master Ball loot right next to it that gave me a piece of leftovers which is a great item to have for the final battle. Eventually, Spiritomb spawned and it was kinda anticlimactic. It doesn't even look that great. <laughs> I mean, it has this really weird texture that makes it see through and I don't know, I'm not a fan of it, but who cares. Cause we finally assembled her champion team from Pokemon Platinum. At this point, I still had to evolve my Feebas and raise my team up to level 100. So I took it upon myself to battle like a couple hundred raid dens and get as much XP candy as possible from them. While doing so, I raided a shiny Magikarp base which was home to some Team Rocket members. After defeating them, I borrowed their clothes and I have to say that this is the perfect match for Cynthia. The OG team's uniform is still the best, no doubt about it. I ran into Jangmo which is actually another one of the Pokemon that Cynthia uses but only has an anime appearance. I never knew this fact about her, but she did indeed use a Como, so that's one more tick off the box as I place it in a Pokey display for it to guard my beach house forever. I found some super high level trainers as well, Team Magma Boss Maxi at level 78, and a random grunt that was level 100, <laughs> are you kidding me? In the end, I decided to use Glaceon over Spiritomb just cause it was a higher level and honestly, both of them are pretty mid. 
Feebas was still sitting like the pathetic piece of crap that it was, and one of the Raidens that I found was carrying a shiny Magneton. I don't know what the odds of that were, but I wasn't gonna complain about it. But right next to that Raid Den was an Ultra Ball loop. I picked it up, and finally, this was the moment we were waiting for. We got the Prism Scale, baby, which took us so long to find. With it, I could finally try to evolve my Feebas, which was level 98, so I used a rare candy on it, but it didn't evolve. I nearly messed up there, cause the item it also requires is the Link Cable, since it requires trade evolution. Fortunately, I had gotten one from a boss earlier, so I used it, and just like that, our first ever capture was finally evolving into the majestic Milotic that it always wanted to be. Within a matter of days, I had caught myself a Rufflet and evolved it into Braviary. There was still one Pokemon that I haven't mentioned that was on Cynthia's team. After taking on the events at Stark Mountain, if you rebattle the Pokemon League, Cynthia makes use of a Porygon Z and has not taken part in any other battle of hers. Frankly, I refuse to capture Porygon Z because I absolutely reject the existence of BDSP. I was so hyped for a full remake and then they gave us that load of chibiness. Really? Anyways, I'm getting sidetracked. I put together my team of level 100 Pokemon and headed on over to Team Galactic's base. I made easy work of the grunts protecting him. All that was left was the leader, Cyrus. This was the battle that would shape our future. I decided to lead with my Lucario as I knew he was gonna lead with Weavile. Being 4 times super effective against it, I had to go for the fighting move in close combat and it absolutely shattered it to pieces. The next Pokemon he sent out was Honchkrow. I had a sneaking suspicion that it would use Sucker Punch. So I started using Swords Dance, and I was right, so I took the chance to max out my attack, and from there, I could just spam Extreme Speed. Somehow it did live by the tiniest of margins, but since Extreme Speed's priority outspeeds Sucker Punch's priority, his move failed. So his next Pokemon was Crobat, and it is definitely a bulkier Pokemon, so I didn't expect to knock it out in one hit. It also lived by a sliver but since it used Braver to kill me, it took recoil damage and ended up killing itself. I had made the right choice in sending out Rose Rain as he throws out his own right period. A choice specs Giga Drain made easy work of it, so he strategically sent out Houndoom. This was not a great matchup for me, so I was forced to switch out. My Togekiss was able to come in and do a chunk of damage with Aura Sphere, but got killed in return with a Sludge Bomb that I wasn't expecting. My Milotic came in and cleaned up the Houndoom, and this left Cyrus with his last Pokemon being Dialga. This was the battle that was going to decide it all. Having used Protect, I knew he was going to use Draco Meteor, so I sacked off my Glaceon to take the hit, which lowered its special attack. What matters now is that Dialga did not have the attack power to defeat my Milotic, as I could use Recover to gain health and slowly exchange blows. Eventually, we did come to a stalemate since I ran out of attacking moves, so there was only one remaining thing for me to do. I sent out my partner Pokemon, who has been with me since the very start. Mega evolving, and with the click of one move, we had defeated Dialga. Garchomp was so powerful that it even broke the game, but with that performance, we had officially defeated Team Galactic, received the Galactic Badge, and had saved the Sinnoh region. That brings an end to my video, so if you enjoyed it, make sure to give it a like and subscribe for more. Let me know any other characters that I should do this challenge again, and with all that being said, I'll see you all next time.